And I have a few props today because I want to explore a little neck balance. We had someone ask that uh, over the weekend on Saturday's class. So none of this stuff do you have to have. You can just use your own body and we're still going to work fairly hard as well because we only have 30 minutes together. But if you have a towel nearby, I would say like a full size towel, um, you can use that, but you don't need it. You don't have to have anything. And I brought a stool over to start because sometimes we just get uncomfortable because I kind of want to address all of us sitting at our computers and the neck and shoulder pain. So, or perhaps discomfort or tension that you're feeling. So sit wherever you're comfortable. You can sit on a chair, you could sit cross-legged in the ground, whatever feels good to you. If you have that towel, you're gonna kind of roll it up like this and you're gonna make yourself an Elizabethan collar around your neck, crossing it like this. Now, I'm not gonna do that so I wanna, because I want you to see what you can do without that. So if you have it, you roll it up, you pull it across your body or your neck, just like this, and you're creating like a little stability for your neck. All right, All right. if you're not doing that, which I'm not gonna do, I'm just gonna kinda of take my hands like this around my neck, they're cold, my hands are cold. Maybe rub them together, warm them up. I'm gonna interlace my hands and I'm gonna let the pinky edge of my hand find the bottom ridge of my skull here. The interlace of my hands is kind of feeling the sides into the back of the neck, so the spine is processed. And my thumb is just kind of giving me a little support around the side bottom here. And I'm just gonna give my neck a little squeeze and I'm gonna kind of imagine that pinky edge of the hand pressing slightly up into my skull. So I'm thinking about the occiput, the <clears throat> occipital ridge lifting off the cervical spine so that we're giving our neck a little bit of traction. You know when we do bridging and we're using the hamstring and glutes to pull the pelvis, to pull the spine into traction, we're just doing that with our hands at our head. So most of my hand is supporting my neck, the pinky edge of my hand is supporting my skull, and it's slightly lifting up. Just breathe there and then take your hands to where the pinky, your hand is kind of around the side of the neck and the pinky finger is going to go just behind your ear. You're thinking about your ears coming over your shoulders and you're just going to kind of hug a little bit with your hands to stabilize the cervical vertebra and just gently look to the right. And this is what you're doing with the blanket, right? or the towel if you have that. So if you're using the towel wrapped around you, you're just gonna hold your neck in the towel or with your hands and look to the right very slowly. Thinking about pivoting just the skull on top of the spine. So it's a lot less range of motion than we think. Come center, pivot the head the other way. Let your jaw release. We're gonna do two more sets going right and left, very slow, very easily, hugging, the cervical spine, either with the towel or blanket or with your hands, and then center. Noticing the moment that maybe the chin or the jaw want to take tension or want to shear forward so the ears are no longer over the shoulders. One more time to the other side. And then one more time to the other side, you're just breathing easy. And then from there, we're going to make a fist with one hand. So if you have the towel or blanket, just toss it to the side. You make a fist with your hand and you're gonna find right where your collarbones separate, right? So there's a little notch there. You're gonna take your fist, the pinky edge of your fist right there is gonna go right into that little sternal notch. And you're gonna take the knuckles aligned and put it with your throat. So you're aligning your knuckles with your throat. I like to also take my other hand to the back of my neck. And when I'm thinking about the stability, so I'm trying to get stability in the lower cervical vertebra. P.S. We're going to do this on the mat and it's going to be a lot harder. So um, explore it here and you can always do it again here. So trying to align the chin with the center of the throat with that sternal notch. My, my fist is right there aligning my throat. My other hand is just kind of hugging. So it's like my hands are coming closer together and I'm just going to drop my chin towards my index part of my um, fist, right? Or you could stack your thumb so that I'm not taking my head down. I'm not rounding forward. I'm not, I'm not collapsing. I'm stabilizing between my hands here. 
and just doing a little circle nod with my chin coming to my fist. Hold that stable and release. Do that again. So squeeze your chin down towards your fist, holding your fist in place. And then release. I like to switch hands because I tend to rotate to whichever direction the arm that's in front. So let's switch sides. Fist into fist to the throat. Don't punch yourself out. Stabilize with your hand behind you to stabilize those cervical vertebra. So the lower cervicals we're trying to get to stabilize as we mobilize the upper. Chin towards the hand, not towards the wrist, not even towards the edge of the femur, um, the femur and eminence. Right, so not even there, but really just to your knuckles. And then release, and doing that again. Shin towards just your knuckles. It's hard. All right, then you're gonna take your hands, ears over shoulders on either side of your head. This sounds funny because it kind of covers my ears. I'm just gonna put my hands there. Elbows can be wherever you need. Think about the head lengthening towards the ceiling. Think about when you're hugging your neck, giving it some stability, giving it a little traction. You want that here. Ears over shoulders, push your head into one side of your hand. So what I'm gonna do is push my head into this hand. But if you look at my head, I didn't shear over to that side. So I'm pushing into my left hand with equal opposite pressure. So my hand is pushing in my head and my head is pushing my hand. I'm gonna feel these muscles wake up in my neck a little bit and then release and do the other side. Press the head into the hand and the hand into the head, lengthening through the top of the head. And then release. And then pushing the head into the hand and the hand into the head. And release. And do the other side. Head into the hand, hand into the head, lengthening through the top of the head. And it's harder for this side to wake up a little bit. I'm tipping a tiny bit. And then release. Let's do one more time each side. Pressing equal but opposite pressure to the left, release, equal but opposite pressure to the right, and release. Then one hand to the forehead, one hand to the back of the head. We're going to do four going forward and back, and midway through we'll switch hands. So my left hand is in front, my right hand is behind, just gripping my skull, right? I'm pushing forward, but I'm not shearing forward. I'm still ears over shoulders as I push forward. And then I'm going to push into my hand in the back. And then I'm going to push forward. And then pushing back. And then flip hands. Because again, we tend to rotate. So pushing forward, hand that's in front. No shearing of the jaw or the top of the skull. Ears over shoulders. And then press the head back into the hands. And then doing that again. Pushing forward. And then pushing back. And then release. And we could do diagonals with that too, but I'm gonna, for the sake of time. I'm gonna get rid of my seat, but this next piece you can do with your seat as well. So if you're already in a chair, you can definitely do this. This is a great thing to do in the middle of um, desk work. Is you're gonna take your hands to your thighs or your knees, and all you're gonna do is very sort of passively, let your shoulders lift up towards your ears. And immediately when I did that, my head went forward. So again, I'm gonna think, where's that throat and neck connection that I started with? What about the ears over the shoulders? I'm just pushing my hand down into either the thighs or the knees, and my shoulders have shrugged up. And what we're gonna do here is inhale. So you're gonna take a big inhale, 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 inhale. Let your breath go all the way up towards those shoulders. Let your ribs lift off your waist. Push your thighs down, lift your ribs. And then as you exhale, exhale, and start to let the shoulders come down into the ribs. So don't let the ribs fall until the very end of the exhale. Keep the ribs lifted as you drop the shoulders down. And then at the very end of your exhale, just let it go. We're gonna do that again. Shoulders shrug up, collarbones lift, ears over shoulders. Inhale there. Stretch your inhale, stretch the ribs up off the waist and then exhale, hold the ribs up as the shoulders melt onto the rib cage and then the very end of your exhale, let your shoulders relax. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, shoulders shrug up, ribs lift up. 
And I'm not squeezing this musculature by pushing my hands down. It just lifted up. So it's just kind of passive. And then my inhale, lift the ribs, wiggle them a little bit, hold your inhale and try and lift your ribs and expand them a little bit more. What happened to the ears over the shoulders? Like mine kind of went forward. I'm going to bring my ears over my shoulders. Then hold your ribs up there as your shoulder blades and collarbones meet the ribs so you know that that's where they're resting. And then exhale and let it all go. All right, from there, we're going to take our fingertips to our shoulders and we're going to reach the elbows forward. Again, you could stay seated in your chair for this. I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see a little bit. We're going to inhale and reach the elbows forward, but keep the fingertips and the shoulder blades together. So I'm getting my shoulder blade wrapping and reaching around my ribs. And then we're going to open the elbows out, pause about halfway, and to go any more than this, start to allow your shoulder blades to draw towards your spine. So let the scapula retract towards your spine, rather than just letting the elbows go back and the shoulders down forward. And then you're going to come forward again with the elbows. We're going to inhale, reach the elbow towards the wall in front of you, or if you don't have a wall, I'll face the camera. So reach towards your camera, reach, 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 reach. Keep your ribs over your pelvis and your ears over your shoulders, and then widen the elbows. You're going to get them somewhere to the side-ish, and then start to let your shoulder blades draw towards the spine. So it looks like this on your back. They're closing towards your spine. And then you're going to reach your elbows forward and your scapula slide around your ribs as your elbows reach forward. We're going to do three more like that. See if you can even bring the elbows a little closer together and reach them towards your camera and lift your elbows uh, slightly higher than your shoulder, just a tiny bit. And then let your shoulder blades draw together as the elbows go back. Notice there if your shoulders creep, crept up. Creeped is maybe not a word. You're going to reach forward again. Reach, 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 reach. Don't think, um, ear, don't think chin forward. Think elbows forward. Elbows, 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 elbows. And then you're going to widen shoulder blade to shoulder blade as the elbows go wide. And then one more. Wrap and reach. Reach, 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 reach those elbows. And then widening, drawing shoulder blade to shoulder blade. And then relax. Then what we're gonna do is side bending from there, getting that scapular movement up and down and the decompression of your upper thoracic vertebra, because sometimes that compression can compound this kind of shearing that happens in our neck, and also it can compound the pressure in our lower back. So one hand, if you're still in your chair, just take one hand to the side of the chair, the stool, your leg. If you're sitting on the ground, just take one hand to the floor. And you're gonna reach, so let's do left hand down, right arm up. Make sure that your arm is casting a little bit of shadow on, the, on your face, especially if you have tighter shoulders, then you're gonna want the arm to be a little more forward. And then you're gonna breathe there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna inhale and shrug the shoulder up, flaring those ribs open. Uh, like a fan, fanning out, and then coming center. Let's stay with the same side two more times. You're going to side bend to the left again, soften your left side. So allow the left side to kind of come closer together. Those ribs soften, that, that left side just hanging off of your jaw and your neck and your ribs as your right side gets all the support. Let the right shoulder blade lift towards your ear on the inhale. And then exhale, come back to center. One more like that. Same side. Let the left side relax. Let your right side get all the support for a second. I'm pushing through my left hand to get weight in my right sits bone. I'm going to check in with my ears, shoulder, ribs, pelvis alignment. Let my shoulder go up on my inhale. I'm gonna circle the hand back behind me and just look at my right hand as I sweep back. Right about here for me, I hit a chest stretch. And so what you're gonna do is find a place that's right for you. So as I reach my arm back behind me, I'm feeling a little pec stretch. And I'm just gonna kind of swipe my arm through space, just fanning my arm, getting a stretch through the pecs. And then come back to center and we'll do the other side. Right hand comes down, left arm goes up, Soften the right side, let the right side give. Push into your right hand to give some weight into your left sits bone. 
check in to make sure your head didn't jut forward but in front of my hand, right? I gotta bring my head back so my arm's casting a little shadow on my head. Inhale, let your shoulder blade creep up. Inhale, 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 and then exhale, come center. We're gonna do that two more times. Exhale, soften the right side as you expand the left side. Inhale, let that left shoulder go up. Fluff those ribs up towards the ceiling. Oh, it's harder on that side. Exhale, coming back to center. One more like that. Softening the right side as you expand the left, pushing a little bit with your right hand. It's like you're getting a little bit of shift of weight to the left. So you want to feel weight even in the sits bones. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Let your left shoulder blade go up. Stretch your inhale. And then sweep that left hand back. You still have support with your right side, right hand. Sweep that left arm back behind you, taking your eyes with it, and just move your arm around through the tight or tingly places that you feel as you continue to breathe. And then you're gonna bring that arm down. All right, and then we're gonna make our way all the way to your back. We're gonna do some neck, butt, neck work, the fist in the throat situation that we did before to get into the deep neck muscles, so your longest capitis, longest coli, and you're gonna make your way to the mat. You can, again, make the fist to the throat. If you, if these muscles are weak, what's gonna to wanna to happen is your chin is gonna to wanna to jut forward kind of like this. Um, so support the head and the hands so that you can really hold this. So if you could imagine like a tangerine or a lemon or something that you're trying to hold in your throat, but we're gonna use our fist. Again, the pinky edge of the knuckle there is gonna go right into that sternal notch at the, uh, where your collarbones separate. Bring your head to center. I'm going to do the first round with my hand, my other hand supporting my head. Draw the chin towards the throat. Press into the feet so the pelvis and the ribs feel stable. Draw the chin towards the throat and barely hover your head. Like, I don't know how many inches. Like, my hair is still touching the mat, but my, I'm not weight bearing. And can I keep squeezing my chin towards my knuckles? towards that sternal notch, so it's towards that space in between my collarbone. As I do this, can I keep my chin tucked as I bring my head to the mat, and then just press your head back into the mat, lengthening through the crown of the head, and feel that reset, and then release. We're gonna do that like maybe three more times. So we'll do, keep the same fist set up, chin towards the throat, not chin towards the wrist, or chin towards the pubic bone, chin towards the throat, towards the knuckles, squeeze them, and barely lift the head up. Just barely. Your hair is still touching the mat, it's just not weight bearing. Chin towards the throat. If you feel like, okay, I can do a little bit more, but keep your chin towards your throat, can you actually nod your skull on your spine, not lift your head up higher? You can hear my voice change as I do this, and then keep your chin tucked as you bring the head back, push the head into the, hand, into the mat lengthening through the top of the head just to release the front of the neck. So the goal here is to feel the front of the neck active. You may feel some stretching in the back of the neck, but if you're feeling excessive work in the back of the neck, then just take it back to the seated variation. Switch fists, so switch hands, so you know that you're not um, favoring a little tilt to one side. Two more times, exhale. Draw the chin towards the throat, into the knuckles. Squeeze the knuckles, and just barely hover the head. Chin is dropping towards the throat. I sometimes think of this like my forehead is coming toward my lips, like down my face towards my lips, helps me. You can always support the head and the hands a little bit to start to wake this up and then release and press the head back. And about three to four of these is all you need because I'm already getting tired and I'm losing my form. So one more time, chin towards the throat or the knuckles, right? You've got the stability in your lower cervical spine. So you're getting the cervical nod, so occiput moving, and then those upper, like C1, C2, gliding, moving with skull, and then you're gonna lift up, chin towards the throat, easy jaw, easy tongue. All right, you're gonna get the head hover. You should feel the front of your throat working. See if you can interlace your hands and support your skull, but keep your chin towards your throat. From there, reach your elbows up towards the ceiling so your scapula come wrapping around your ribs. Rock a little side to side. Keep your head heavy in your hands. You're gonna breathe in here. As you exhale, 
keep the chin towards the throat and start to glide the breastbone towards the navel, towards the pubic bone. Keep a little zipper energy of the pubic bone towards the navel, keep the chin towards the throat. Oops, I lost my, so keep that nod, stay there. And did you really curl through the rib cage, through the thoracic spine to get the rest of the way up? Or did you just jut your chin forward towards your pubic bone? Chin towards the throat. You are gonna breathe in here and on your exhale, you're gonna squeeze that rib to pelvis, pubic bone to breastbone. So one leg up to tabletop. What happened to the neck and head? Keep that neck and head. Keep the whole anterior chain working from your throat through your abs. From there, you can keep both hands supporting your head, but make sure you're reaching your elbows towards the ceiling. We're gonna breathe in and on your exhale, squeeze the legs together, hug the left knee in, either with your hands on your shin or your hands behind your head, send the right leg out, squeezing them together, low pelvic floor belly, and we're gonna switch. Let's inhale, switch, inhale, exhale for two. Inhale for two, exhale for two. Inhale for two, exhale for two. Continually check in with that chin towards the throat. Try not to shear so you can take your hands as you keep breathing and moving the legs and stabilizing your torso. Take your hands to the base of your neck where it starts to meet the ribs and feel if you're pulling too much through there. You'll feel because it feels like a big chunk and see if you can draw the chin more towards the throat and curl around the heart rather than just pick the head up. Curl around the heart. Get your breastbone drawing towards your pubic bone. Bring both knees in. Let your head come down. Press your head into the mat. Breathe. Exhale, draw the chin towards the throat. Take your hands towards your shins. Curl up slowly. Right here, I'm gonna think, okay, did I actually curl through my spine? I kind of exaggerated a little bit, but there. I have to find the mat. So, Physics, something has to go down to lift something else up, so my ribs have to go into the mat to curl my head up. Press my shins into my hands and my hands into my shins, double leg stretch. Keep your pelvis down, curl the ribs, keep the chin towards the throat. It's not about the height, it's about the quality. Inhale, arms and legs either straight up towards the ceiling, 45 degrees, or even a little lower, and then exhale, curl in, curl in, curl in, not from your chin, chin towards the throat, curl around your heart. Inhale out. Exhale, curl around the heart. Inhale up. Exhale, curl around the heart. One more like this, inhale up. Oh, maybe two more. Exhale, curl around the heart, curl around the heart, curl around the heart. Lengthen and curl around the heart. Long back of the neck. Exhale, curl around the heart. Then what you're gonna do is grab your thighs, press your legs into your hands and rock up to sitting. Now we're gonna come onto our forearms and knees. All right, from here, the scapular placement on your ribs is gonna play a huge role in your neck tension. And a lot of times, especially with mouse hand and typing and texting, this right side, or if you're left-handed, the left side gets really out of whack. So let's talk to the ribs to the shoulders. You guys know this one, if you've been at class before. Elbows under the shoulders, middle of the wrist and middle finger, finger aligned. If you cannot do this, on the floor, you can always do this against the wall in a standing plank position, so your forearms will be at the wall. You're gonna lengthen the back of the neck, having little energy of the chin towards the throat. Open the collarbones as you squeeze the elbows together, push into the hands, levitate the elbows off like four or five inches. I don't know, maybe that's not even four or five inches. Just enough to where you feel the weight shift into your hands because you likely shift it back, reach the elbows towards the mat and come down. Three more like that. A little of that belly work, chin towards the throat, collarbones wide, hug the elbows together, and slowly lower down. All right, just two more. Pressing, and lowering down, chin towards the throat. Pressing through the whole hand. From here, you're gonna keep this work lower, just your left elbow down to the mat, keep your torso where it is. So just your left elbow, bring your right hand back so it's in line with your left elbow. Push into your left shin and your left forearm, stretch back through your right leg, lift your right leg up and open your hip to the right. So you're opening your pelvis. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna widen your right elbow out to the right, push through your left forearm, bend your right knee towards your right elbow. Bend your right knee to your right elbow. Let's flex the foot as you bend in and then press back, pointing the foot as you stretch that right leg back. You're gonna inhale, bend right knee to right elbow, exhale, pressing back. 
Check in with your shoulders, wide collarbones, active elbows, long back of the neck. Bend the right leg in, stretch it out, three. Inhale in, exhale, four. Inhale in, exhale out, five. Inhale in, exhale out, six. Inhale in, exhale out, seven. Exhale, find the belly work, find the scapula, find the ease in your neck and the lightness in your body. Two more. And one more. Stay there. Then just lower and lift that leg for eight and seven. And you are a little open. Squeeze your thigh. And five. Longer leg. If something's pulling your leg, but you are still stable in your trunk and your shoulders and your neck is easy. Two more. And then we're going to bring that leg down. Come on to both forearms. I'm going to spin around so it's easier, but you guys are probably fine where you are. Press into the palms. Levitate up a little bit. Find that collarbone, long back of the neck. Active throat, active belly. Keep your body where it is as you lower your right elbow towards the mat. I'm pushing through the right forearm. Bring the left hand back so that it's opposite the, or out from the right elbow. Then I'm going to send the left leg back, pushing through my right shin. Rotate my pelvis to the left. Lift that leg up. Bend the left knee to the left elbow. And then press back for one. Inhale in. Exhale, belly, shoulders, leg. Two. And three. Bending in. Exhale out. Four. Inhale in. Exhale out. Five. Inhale in. Exhale out. Six. Inhale in. Exhale out. Seven. Inhale in. Exhale out. Eight. And nine, and 10, hold there, point the toes, lower in the four, eight. Not a pelvic movement, a hip joint movement, a leg movement. What about those shoulders? Like I already rounded a little bit. So shoulders wrapping around my ribs. Four, five, and exhale, six, exhale, seven. Last one, eight, and then come all the way in. Come onto your hands and knees. And what you're gonna do is let your chest drop down and your shoulder blades draw together. Now, even doing this, where, so sometimes it's nice when you're doing this, especially if you're doing any other online stuff or yoga classes, like what can you do if you can't sense where your neck is or where your spine is, where could you place your face so that your neck has the most ease? And then press into the hands and keep your spine neutral and wrap your shoulder blades around your ribs without collapsing your chest. All right, we're gonna do that two more times. Shoulder blades shrug together. And then push and widen. Push, 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 wrap, 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 reach, reach, reach the hands. Like elbows through the hands. And then last one. You could do this on your forearms, by the way, or you could do this with fists or you can do this with your hands. Press the mat away as much as you can. Open your chest out, but spine that breastbone to pubic bone. So that strap from your breastbone to your pubic bone. And then what about from the ribs to the pelvis? And then squeeze your left tush as you send your left leg back. Squeeze your tush a little bit there. And already I've sunk my head and my chest in bed. So I'm gonna get a little lighter, a little bit more active in my lift out of my shoulders, opening the breastbone long back of the neck. So where can my face be that my neck and head are easy? And then I'm gonna see if I can send my other leg back. And I'm gonna use my glutes for this because that glute and neck connection are important. And then can I draw my chin towards my throat, but don't let my head drop down? Can I open my collarbones and my breastbone, but keep my shoulders on my ribs? Can I think about if I'm on my forearms, reaching through my elbows, if I'm on my fists, reaching through my knuckles, if I'm in my hand, my whole hand pushing the mat away from me, and my body getting lighter, and my tush working, and right here, I got a little lighter, but then I started to shorten in the back of my neck. So I'm gonna lengthen my tailbone, I'm gonna lengthen my head away from each other, long back of the neck, but at the same time, I gotta reach my breastbone out. Whew, shaking up. My right side's gonna need to pull up, and it's going to go right into that right shoulder. So I'm going to get my right scapula wrapping around my ribs. I got to push more with my right hand and I got to get more glute pulling that right side of my pelvis longer. So being in this moment is hard. You could do this kneeling. You could do it on your forearms or your fists. We're going to do one more breath here. Woo! Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Get longer. Get longer. And then bring the knees down. 
and take whatever rest pose you need to. So it could be resting on your back, it could be child's pose, whatever you want. And then what we're gonna do is just do a little elbow circle. So you're gonna inhale, let everything go, let everything move, circling the elbows. As you bring the elbows forward, let yourself round a little bit. As you lift the elbows up, let the head stack on top of the spine. And as you let your elbows go back, lift your chest. One more, rounding, lifting, reaching, and then just shake it out. Ugh. So that planking and holding that position is going to in hopefully integrate that all into your trunk. So now that you go back to your computers, as I will as well, you know, it's just like we have to constantly mix up the posturing. So posture is not a static thing. It's a very dynamic thing. So just keep moving, taking little breaks, um, revisiting anything that we kind of did here today would be wonderful just to reset in the middle of that. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is quick, quick and in, in and out. Um, I'm Nicole Watkins. For those of you who I don't know, I'm teaching for Kyra Studios and we hope you stay strong, healthy and home so that you guys are all safe. Thank you guys. I'll be on for a few minutes if you need me. But if not, bye, enjoy your day.